Hello everybody, welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about a unique type of butt converter, which is a multi-phase butt converter. Now, if you're familiar with the architecture used in voltage regulator modules, then you know that these are often multi-phase butt converters. These converters are used in other applications that require low noise, and they're actually a topology that we discussed with Steven Schneer on a recent podcast episode. We're gonna run over the fundamentals of these power regulators in this episode, so let's get started. Well, a multi-phase buck converter uses multiple switching elements all cascaded in parallel in order to provide lower noise and higher current than you would have with a single group of switching elements. This is a great topology if you need to reduce the noise on your voltage output because the converter operates in such a way that it appears to have a higher switching frequency than if you had a single switching stage in your buck converter. Now, I discussed this topology as well as other power products with Steven Schneer from Texas Instruments in a recent episode of the Altium On Track podcast. Let's take a look at what he has to say about multi-phase buck converters in that recent episode. Typically, multi-phase is at a current level above a certain amount. You typically won't see multi-phase at 3 amps. And typically, multi-phase is also directly towards like a high transient requirement type application. Processor power, FPGA power, the core rail. Typically, it's also lower output voltage where you have you know a ton of current a low output voltage and you need low ripple for that because you know the percentage ripple when you get down into 0.75 volts or 0.6 volts a few tens of millivolts of ripple is a significant percentage of that output voltage well yeah i think it makes sense for the issue you brought up because you know the core voltage keeps going down and then it's not just the noise margin is staying fixed. The noise margin is also going down as right. well. You can't just scale down the core voltage and then expect the, the noise requirement to scale down by the same factor. It actually scales down further. That's right. Absolutely. I would say for a single phase converter up to, let's say 50 amps probably makes sense. But uh, when you're starting to scale up higher than that, then multi-phase, I, I don't think you're going to find many single phase uh, converters higher than that. If you want to watch that episode of the All Team On Track podcast, make sure to check the link in the description. For now, let's jump onto the whiteboard and we can see how these power regulators work. So a buck converter that has a multi-phase topology has a pretty simple way it is set up. First, we of course have our source and then we have some input capacitance and then we get over to our switching elements. Now our switching elements here, I'm just drawing them out as NMOS and we have our high side and our low side elements in this example. And then here we have ground. We then have our PWM generator that is controlling these two FETs. Then we go out to our inductor. This is pretty simplistic, and essentially, when we have this as a multi-phase topology, we have another leg that comes down like this, but we then have another leg over here, which comes down and goes to another NMOS. Then we have a second low side NMOS like this, and then we have another PWM controller down here on this side. This then goes out to another inductor, and then these two on their output essentially come together and then are routed to V out. Now, of course, we have some capacitance coming here on the output. We may also have some capacitance here on this output. But in any case, these two are then routing to the same output voltage node. So here we have V out, and then here we have V out. So we now have two sets of switching stages that are working together to provide our step down voltage from whatever our input is here to whatever our output is over here. What makes this special is how these different PWM stages are synchronized by the controller. So what happens in a multi-phase buck converter is that here, if we have a time at which this PWM switches as being at T equal to zero, the time at which this second stage uh, switches is going to be equal to T equals one half 
of whatever the period is corresponding to this switching frequency. So here we have a switching frequency F sub S, and then here this period at which this thing switches is going to be half of one over F sub S. So these are delayed from each other by half of a period. And so by doing this, anytime this first switching stage switches and then sources some current into the output node, the second stage is going to switch sometime later and it's going to source some current into that output node. Now, if the entire time at which this set of switching stages is switching is equal to T, this is actually acting as if the switching frequency, we'll call it capital F sub S, seen at the output is equal to double the individual switching frequencies of our two PWM stages. This means that the output voltage has its ripple being brought down by a factor two because we have two switching stages, each of them switching at an identical frequency. But when you look at the number of times per second that you have current being delivered to this output node, it actually comes out to being double the switching frequency. Now, if we were to continue cascading this down to let's say three sets of PWM stages, instead of having a two here in the denominator, we would instead have a, let's say one third, there would be another switching stage that would switch at two thirds of this period. And then as a result, the switching frequency that determines the ripple level uh, seen at the output is now going to be triple the individual switching frequencies. So now we've got a ripple down for, by a factor of three compared to just one of these stages individually. So this is a really great topology if you need to supply high current, but with low ripple and without having to beef up on all this extra capacitance that you might typically use to try and reduce ripple. Now, one of the reasons that these are used to provide high current is because each of these individual stages is switching very infrequently. And actually you can see here that these things have to have very low duty cycle in order to provide this type of waveform and then get this equivalent double or triple or quadruple switching frequency, however many phases you have. But the idea here is that when the, this PWM controller switches these FETs on, they're on for a shorter period of time. So the average current that they experience throughout this period is going to be lower. That means that the R on losses are going to be lower and you've got less heating within these FETs inside of this topology. Then later, these other FETs turn on and they're gonna heat up, but because they're also on for a shorter period of time, they experience less heat. And that happens for all of these different switching stages that you have in this topology. So that's another advantage is that it reduces the thermal load on these two FETs and essentially spreads that thermal load out across all of the FETs that are in this converter. So because you're spreading out that thermal load across multiple switching elements in this topology, it allows you to access higher currents and still operate at an extended period of time. So with these higher currents, remember you're on for a lower period of time. So your average current that you're running through all of these different switching elements is lower. That's what then allows you to spread out that thermal load at a higher current. Now, I think it's natural to look at this topology and say that because you have multiple switching stages all kind of paralleled out like this in this topology, that you're then gonna have to have feedback and control for them individually. That's not necessarily the case because remember, they're sharing the same V out here in this topology. So you really only have one V out measurement that's used to then control the duty cycle for all of these stages individually. So they're all gonna be synced to the same duty cycle, D, and then same thing down here for this other one, D. The only difference is ensuring and maintaining this separation from each other in time that you see right here in this graph. And that's what ensures you always get that triple or doubling or whatever it is, switching frequency that then determines your ripple on the output. So in short, if you need to get to a lower ripple value at a higher current and you wanna spread out that thermal load, multi-phase buck regulator might be one of your solutions. How are these switching elements arranged around a controller? Are they integrated? 
or are they placed as discrete components? Well, you actually have both options depending on the power level that you need and depending on which components you're using. So in some multi-phase converters, all of this stuff, except for, of course, the inductors and the capacitors and everything, are integrated into a single integrated circuit. So you could essentially have all of this stuff that I've boxed out right here inside of a single chip. The other option is you can get a controller that essentially just controls when the PWM signals are switching. And then using that controller, you could then use a set of external gate drivers and MOSFETs to then wire up your own multi-phase buck converter. So you have the option to go either direction, again, depending on the power output that you wanna access. So let's take a look at some components on Octopart and we can see what different options are available on the market. So I'm here on Octopart and I pulled up a search for multi-phase buck controller. So this is the type of chip that you would wanna use if you had something like external gate drivers. So the first one I wanna look at is this on semiconductor component. Now this one uses from two to four outputs and it's a synchronous buck regulator with multi-phase topology. So I've pulled up the data sheet here and you can already see in the data sheet that they are targeting AMD processors. So this is something that's specifically meant for processors you'd throw onto a motherboard. Now you can see here also that the output is very low and that's one of the reasons that you would use this type of regulator because as I showed earlier, the duty cycles tend to be lower and that's because you are stepping down to lower voltages that would be used at logic levels in more advanced processors. So that's one of the reasons you do this. This type of buck converter would be used for something like external gate drivers. And if you scroll down to the application example over here, let's go ahead and rotate it so we can see it we have four gate drivers on the output. So you can see here, that's from U2 to U5. What the ADP3196 is doing is it's using a feedback loop to control when each of these gate drivers is switching. And those gate drivers are then driving our pairs of high and low MOSFETs in order to drive current over to the output at different points in time. And then of course, they're all delayed by a factor T over four, because again, this is a four output buck converter. So that's how this type of system works. And this would be used to supply higher current at lower voltages, specifically for processors that have a lot of IO. And you can already see here, just if I zoom in, the output voltage, 0.375 volts to 1.55 volts, this is at the more advanced end of processors running at probably 1.0 or 1.2 volts core logic. And you can see here the current value that they're targeting, 100 amps. That's a lot of current. Now let's look at another component from Renesis. So this one is a little bit different. It does require external FETs, but if you look at the block diagram, you can see here that it's a little more simplified because the drivers are integrated right into the component. So that's another thing that you might see if you're looking for a multi-phase buck controller. You don't always need to have these external drivers. Sometimes you just need the external MOSFETs and the drivers are built in. So make sure to check the block diagram because you may not find that the drivers are actually inside of the buck controller. If you need the drivers on the inside, you wanna have a highly integrated component like this Renesis component, but it may run at lower current values. Here's another great example from analog devices. This particular component can support up to four phases with a single chip. However, in the description, you can see here that you can use multiples of these to support up to 18 phases. So you can get a lot of power out of these. And again, the entire point here is to cascade all of these phases together so that you get very low ripple current even though you're drawing very high total current out of these devices. You can also see here that you have a set of MOSFETs in each power stage. However, again, the driver side for all of this is built into the chip. So they've tried to reduce the amount of extra work you need to do to use this type of chip to get to very low ripple. These are just a few examples that we've looked at in this video. There are many others that are out there on the market. So make sure to head over to Octopart if you wanna find a multi-phase buck regulator or buck controller.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to check out that podcast episode with Stephen Schneer from Texas Instruments. The link is in the description, and I thought it was a very informative episode, and I hope you'll think so too. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section, and of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.